Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Trustee Bowen. Present. Trustee Brewer. Trustee Cascarella. Present. Trustee Mojica. Here. Here. Sure, Fidoa. Here. For Clarkers present, Supervisor Fletcher. Here. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We have the agenda before us. Any addition? Or excuse me, a motion to excuse uh, Trustee Brewer. So moved. Support. Support it. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Motion carries. We have the agenda before us. Any additions or deletions? I'm, I'm going to approve the agenda as presented. It's been moved. Is there support? Support. There is support. All those in favor of approving the agenda as presented, please say aye. Uh, aye. aye. All those opposed say nay. Motion carries. You notice there's a communication in your board packet. Now we have public comment. Anybody here this evening would like to speak to the board? Now's your opportunity. Three minutes each. Okay. Sure, if you'd like to speak to the board, just come on up to the podium, state your name and address for the record. Hello, everybody. My name is Mike Hafaz. I'm the co-founder and owner of Zab Zone. And um, I thought uh, part of the agenda today was going to be to discuss the Delta Township uh, trying to uh, uh, help with the state on obtaining liquor license. Uh, and I understand that was late in the agenda. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about it, if I may. Sure. Why don't you go Since we're at it, I know it was uh, the last thing that you were supposed to be discussing. Uh, so, is everyone familiar with that zone? Anyone who's not? All right, good, good. Um, we've been around for uh, 30 years, and in uh, Delta Township, uh, we've been around for 20 years. Um, I'm also a resident of Delta Township. Uh, I live by the Waldemar Park, okay? So, uh, we got a lot of help from you guys in the past, and we thank you for it, for everything that you had facilitated for Zab zone. Uh, right now, Zab zone is at a critical uh, place because we have uh, sold our previous building. Um, and you know, I'm sure most of you are aware that there's going to be, uh, with, uh, it's already under construction for a public storage, uh, which I think they're doing a great job, these guys. Uh, and we have bought the younger space in the, in the mall. Okay. Uh, everything is going well with the construction, except that we're supposed to leave the previous location before the end of December. So it's very critical for us. We tried to purchase uh, a liquor license and none are available in the county or the township, uh, which really left us only with uh, one option, which is basically what they call a resort license. Uh, and even that is not available, even though it has a lot of restrictions. So we were delightful to hear from the uh, city manager that Delta Township will actually uh, get involved in this. And we're just hoping that we could expedite it as much as we could, uh, considering that Christmas season is coming up on us soon. Uh, most corporation, if we don't have liquor license, will not hold corporate events. And it's a very important uh, aspect of the business for us. Uh, so, uh, Time is very critical for us, and we appreciate it if you could expedite it as much as you could uh, to facilitate uh, obtaining a liquor license and, uh, from the state. That's all I have to say, and I appreciate everything you guys have to do. Well, great. Well, I, I for one, am very excited to see the expansion at the Lansing Mall. I think what you are building there is exactly the type of businesses the ball needs to bring in if it's going to continue to thrive and uh, transform for you know the future. So we're very pleased to see the expansion expansion of Zap Zone going on. Everything I've read about what you're going to have there, it sounds like it's going to be a great entertainment venue once it opens up and it's going to become a destination. I think that a lot of people will come to Delta just to come to go to Zap Zone. I have three kids, so I've been to your current or I should say your former facility uh, many, many times, uh, so I'm very familiar with it, so glad to see that expansion, so anything it, it, we can do to help, I think. Yeah, great. just to give you an idea, uh, I mean, when we started 20 years ago in Lansing, we only had 6,000 square foot, uh, but I always work with troubled places, 
As a matter of fact, when I opened the first location or the second one, rather, I got awarded as the best developer from Delta Township. So I, I still have that on my wall, by the way. <laughs> uh, so we've expanded it a lot. Uh, we're actually uh, putting go-karts, we're putting um, uh, X throwing, we're putting uh, mm. a full-scale restaurants, uh, plus the laser tag, the golf. And it's a 125,000 square foot facility. So we're counting on people coming to Delta Township just to check it out 100%. And uh, we just hope that uh, and we're pretty positive. It will be very successful. Well, I think you'll be a great success. <laughs> Any questions for me, guys? I'll be more than happy to answer. All okay. good? Well, great. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Anybody else like to speak during public comment? Okay, seeing so nobody come forward, we'll move forward. Next up is the consent agenda. It's a pleasure of the board on the items on our consent agenda this evening. Andrea? I move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Is there support? Support. There is support. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll on approving the consent agenda this evening? Trustee Cascarella? Yes. Trustee Bowen? Yes. Trustee Brewer? Trustee Mojica? Yes. Treasurer Fidelma? Yes. Clerk Parker says Supervisor Fletcher? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We move down to uh, new items of business. Uh, number nine, the Webster Road Bridge Project Agreement with the Eaton County Road Commission. It's a pleasure of the board on this one. Dennis. I move that the uh, Township Board approve the proposed cost sharing agreement with the Eaton County Road Commission for the Webster Road Bridge Rehabilitation Project with the purpose to rehabilitate the Webster Road Bridge and widen the bridge deck to accommodate a dedicated non-motorized river crossing to provide safe access for pedestrians and other non-motorized users in that area of the township, including design and construction engineering for an estimated local project match in the amount of $240,000, $150,750 design and engineering and $150,000 construction engineering for the total estimated cost of $541,150 and further, that the township manager is authorized and directed to execute said agreement. I apologize for the run on sentence. <laughs> is there support? support? There is support. Any discussion? See, none. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, say nay. Motion carries. Manager's report. Brian, what do you have for us? This evening? Thank you, Mr. Supervisor and board members. Um, not a lot tonight. I just want to thank Matt Hannes from the Road Commission who came out um, just in case there's any questions. Uh, but their partnership on this uh, bridge project is uh, very critical. Um, so uh, I think it's going to be a wonderful project in the future and kind of a once in a lifetime thing to be able to add this component onto the bridge. And it's, it is a lot of extra work uh, versus just redesigning the bridge as it is. So. Uh, thanks for being here, Matt. Uh, the other thing is we've been just scrambling, dealing with building issues, uh, be it the community center, um, which was run into uh, July 4th. Uh, so I appreciate all the staff's work and, and uh, we've had to relocate several events and that type of thing. And uh, we're working on getting uh, structural engineering design to uh, shore up the building or make the fix so that we can allow people back in. Um, and then this building, I apologize for no air conditioning today. Uh, we dropped a leg, uh, the Board of Water and Light, you may have seen it is out there working pretty hard. Hopefully we'll have that restored um, tonight, but it was uh, a pretty big mess, um, mostly, uh, well, all of, on their side with their, their power running into the building. So um, hopefully we'll get that up and running tonight. They have, I know they have a night crew on standby to work through the night. Uh, so hopefully by tomorrow we'll be back fully in business and uh, assess if there's any other ramifications to any of our equipment here or that type of thing uh, uh, that resulted from um, the uh, the power uh, going out and the uh, kind of a unique situation where we dropped a leg and had some power and kicking on the generator competing. So um, just dealing with that. But other than that, uh, happy to answer any questions board members may have. Dennis. Yeah, Brian, going back to the Webster uh, Road Bridge, um, I can't help but think uh, the um, comment you made regarding the Delhi Township uh, and their surprise with the bids that came back for their wastewater treatment project and how the cost of doubled or more uh, since uh, they contemplated that issue. And 
it makes me wonder about the Webster Road Bridge project as well. We're committing a certain amount, uh, notwithstanding that's a future project on a year or so down the road. I'm just wondering what are contingencies in place for if the bids come in higher? And are we still just obligated for the dollar amount here? Or could we potentially be asked to raise that dollar amount? We would be asked to raise a dollar amount. The, the local, and I can have Matt chime in too, the, the local bridge funding covers about 90% of the construction. So see the local match was 10%, which we're splitting 50-50 with right. the road commission. Um, I guess the hope is that those numbers were put in last year. Um, so we had a little bit more updated numbers when they were put in and then there's escalation for the future years. So hopefully those numbers are a little okay. bit insulated because we've already taken into account some of the inflation. Is that correct, Matt? Yeah, some of it is keeping up. You're down the road, you're down the road, so you just never know. Right. Um, Right. Well, I'm just I'm mentally prepared that that could eventually be the case. So I just wanted to point that out. Thank you. Yeah, and and that's uh, it, it is a good question, Dennis. So that and there is, and and we have the pathway project also as part of that. So we're we're trying to patch together several different funding mechanisms to help. Uh, pay for it. I think with this agreement, at least the design piece of it should be uh, the road commission took bids, so that's pretty locked in. Um, but the yeah, the construction piece and construction engineering could fluctuate a little bit. Right. Thank you, Karen. Oh, um, but I thought I read some more that um, that the commuter center was somebody ran into it. How, how do we know this person's okay? Um, I, I don't know her current condition. I think I think the person was okay. Um, I think it was a medical emergency that, uh, you know, I can't speculate, but whether it was diabetic or something like that, and, and just hit the gas instead of the brake, and they were going north on Canal, went over the roundabout, and then into the yard, and then all the way up to the building. Wow. But it was. If you had heard anything, so nice if she was, she he or she was okay. Any other questions for Brian? Okay, great. Thanks, Brian. We move to the committee to hold the discussion on the development district liquor license. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Peter Menser, Community Economic Development Director. Uh, it's not lost on me on the last thing on the agenda, so I'll go quickly. <laughs> So uh, there's a memo in your packet that goes into, I think, pretty good detail on kind of the ins and outs of the development liquor licenses. There's uh, really a, what is it though? It's a type of class C or class C on-premise consumption liquor license. So it's issued in uh, communities that have that have certain criteria, but really mostly uh, it's ones that have like quarter improvement authority, downtown development authority, principal shopping district, or a TIFA, a tax increment finance authority. So with the adoption of the quarter improvement authority along Saginaw Highway, now the township's in a position where they qualify, or bit well, businesses in the township qualify for these types of license. And it's something we haven't issued or gone down this road yet. So I just wanted to provide a little background info and then uh, got a request really kind of at the end here. So um, we were approached as kind of prefaced earlier by Zap Zone about seeking out this type of license. Um, as mentioned, it's something now that would qualify and the mall and Zap Zone property are in the Saginaw Highway um, Improvement Authority area. So um, this is all rooted in state law. It started in 2006. There are all amendments to the Michigan Liquor Control Code. Um, it, it, it's right now, the most recent amendment, um, there are two different types of licenses. There's what's called RDA redevelopment and one that's DDA and it's really development district, not downtown development authority. Um, and this, so this, there's two different licenses that are issued under two different sections of the code. We're look, looking and what I'm focused on is one of those. It's the, uh, the development district license. The other one, I'm not really quite sure how it's applicable. There are much higher financial thresholds, but this is fairly low, and I'll get into what that means here in a second. So um, there's, I think I included like six or seven of these criteria. I'll buzz through them. Um, as mentioned before, the business has to be in a recognized development district. We've got the corridor improvement authority. That is one of those. 
Uh, business must invest at least $75,000 in new construction, rehabilitation, or restoration of the building to be licensed in the last five years. That's something they need to uh, show receipts to the Michigan Liquor Control Commission. They have to have at least, or there must be at least $200,000 in total investment and in private investment, real and personal property within the development district. So that runs from Broadbent down to Waverly along Saginaw Highway. The, our assessor initially estimated the last five years, there's been about 84 million in development. Um, the, the business must be engaged in dining, entertainment, or recreation, open to the general public, and have a seating capacity of not less than 25. Applicant has to demonstrate uh, that they've tried to secure a, a license already. So then there are forms within the application that I included in your meeting packet. So they need to show that they have dem demonstrated to try to get these licenses. Um, I did a search just this morning just to check because I check a lot. There are currently no escrowed liquor licenses, which should, for a sale, the licenses have to be escrowed. And there are currently none in Eaton County. That could change and will change throughout the year. But it's been that way for at least the last couple of months since I've been paying attention to this kind of thing. Uh, the final thing is the applicant has to pay a license fee of $20,000 to the Michigan Liquor Control Commission. And there's some cost sharing there. I'll, I'll briefly talk about that. So um, I think you probably know the general information on how liquor licensing works, but for these um, it's typically operated with the quota system, so it's based on population. So per Class C license in Delta Township or in Michigan, it's one license per community for every 1,500 people. So Delta Township, that puts us at 22, 22 quota licenses. Those are all out in the market and have been for quite some time. I wouldn't expect that they're going to come back. There are 26 active Class C licenses in the township, and you can, uh, as Mike mentioned earlier, if there isn't a liquor license, a quota license available, you can transfer, actually go to another area within the county and transfer that into Delta Township. You've probably been through that process at the board level many times. So that that's where the four additional comes from. That's why we have more now. Uh, but as I mentioned, there are currently no escrowed account, escrowed licenses. Um, in the memoir, I do touch briefly on chapter four, which is alcoholic liquors of the so we do regulate this process now. Um, the ordinance really kind of consists of information that's required for new applicants. Uh, the baseline is pretty low uh, in terms of, you know, you just had to be a member of good standing, no felons, that kind of thing. Um, then there are, there are a series, I think 17 restrictions on granting of new licenses, so criteria. One of which that popped out to me that something for future discussion is the requirement for full, full service restaurant. So, and I granted, I don't have the history here in the township, but uh, the other municipalities uh, regulate liquor licenses in a similar way. But I just wanted to at least call it to the attention that any new liquor license in the township, uh, quota or otherwise, would be required to be a part of a full service restaurant that has a capacity of at least 50 people. And that 50% of the grocery receipts from that business have to be from the sale of food. Um, so I don't, we, we can talk more about that particular aspect of it. I don't think it's something that the township has. Um, proactively reviewed on a regular basis in terms of receipts and everything. So um, that ordinance was last updated in 2002. And I might suggest that we take a look at that at a future meeting. And um, at the end, I've got some next steps. We can talk about that. Financially, uh, right now, the township does not charge for new liquor licenses. I would suggest that we do add a fee if we do go down the road of development district liquor licenses. It does take some time for the assessor to pull together the development, the information on the development in the district. And then there'll be some um, time, just some minimal staff time just to process the application, get in front of you. Um, but we, that could be a very nominal fee just to cover the cost of the, pro, of the, the work the staff does. Um, new licenses would, yeah, they require work from our assessor and from staff, probably myself or someone else in the manager's office. The Michigan Liquor Control Commission does not prescribe a fee for municipalities or limit the amount that we could charge, but I would suggest some pretty, you know, just something not long. And then something I did not know about the, um, the, the, the control liquor control commission actually does. We see 55% of the retailers fees. So that's new fees for new licenses and fees for renewals that come back to the township. And then in, in our scenario, since we don't have a direct police force, it's like a Delta police force, we go through the county sheriff's office, that money goes actually to the sheriff's office and comes off the top, like financially comes off the top of what we pay the Delta patrol. So we do see the money back. And that was about $17,000 last year. 
Transferability, I think in terms of risk, this is really helpful because a class C liquor license is a commodity, a business can get it and sell it and it remains in the marketplace. Development district licenses are different. They are not transferable to other businesses or other things. So in considering an application, you're issuing it to that specific business at that location. There's no, and once that business, if they do go out of business, uh, that license reverts back to the state and it's terminated. Okay. Uh, Peter, what if it's sold? It stays existing, but it gets sold. The license can transfer. There is a process for if I were to, let's uh, just pick a business. If I were to buy that business to take over, it, it stays with the business, not necessarily the oh. individual that owns it, the company that owns it. At least that's the way I understand it. Uh, a couple considerations as we discuss this moving forward. Um, the liquor license outlook, um, I've mentioned in the memo, I don't see the situation with liquor licenses changing. There are currently no escrowed licenses available. There have to be pretty significant market changes for that to, for there to be significant uh, more liquor licenses on the market. Um, so one of the, the benefits of the development license, it has a focused growth and investment in, in our case, um, right on the corridor. So an area that we, the township has identified as being where commercial growth would happen and um, where investment is, is slated given the establishment of the CIA and the, the two different TISM districts. And then it, it also could be used to really to incentivize development and redevelopment on the corridor. If a business is looking for a location, this may be an attractive option if they know that, hey, there's a, if I can provide the needed investment that this is an opportunity to meet that is not an opportunity available to me somewhere else and maybe in the region or somewhere else in the state. Um, finally, the, I, I do think this initiative aligns with a couple of your um, the items in the board strategic plan, really the community vitality focus area. So it incentivizes investment or it has the potential to incentivize investment. It also really could help uh, the viability of corridor businesses, whether it's new businesses um, that have, or existing businesses like ZapZone that are they're reinvesting in, in their um, business or someone else, like I said, that could be looking in this area. So um, next steps, if, if if you are interested in moving ahead on this, um, I could prepare an application and kind of delineate the process in a document and for consideration of the next meeting. If, if you go down this road, I think the how it would, the literal way it would play out is there's a form that the state has that you've seen before for any li new liquor license application. It's really just a, a vote on a resolution. Um, so there would be no necessarily special process where you're going through and reviewing the application any differently than you have been, been now, but uh, you'll have kind of this background information and we'll have, we'll have a, pro a little more um, obvious process as to how this all plays out. And if you are interested in changes to chapter four, I could put together some, um, a, a, some draft suggestions on how you might change that, it, it, whether we keep the 50%. I don't expect to engage in a long form conversation on this now, but the 50% the rule still is, is here in Delta. So if that's something you want to continue or look at other options, the, the way I see it is it, it may preclude some businesses from being here. Um, some very specific types of businesses, but it's, it's just whether or not we, you know, we want to keep that, that rule. Start with Andrea. Uh, yeah, just a question. Um, Regarding the board approval, are there timing issues we need to be aware of? I, we heard from the owner of Zap Zone. Obviously, they are under construction and have a plan. So, are there just some time sensitivities that we need to be cognizant of in any action we may or may not take as a board? Uh, there's no specific deadlines, but just for the process standpoint, once the um, ZapZone has a complete application, and our application will be a, a, a shadow of what the MLCC. You've got you've got the questionnaire and stuff that the state has. I mean, ours would be very very straightforward and simple application. There's no specific timeline on it other than just trying to move ahead as quickly as possible in the case of ZapZone. But if you were to move ahead on this, I could see coming back at your next meeting with this application, a process. And at the following meeting, acting on, if they have a complete application, acting on the resolution that they would then use to send their application into MLCC. Okay, thank you. Okay. Is this, is it beer and wine for Zap Zone or is it a full alcohol bar? It, it could be, oh, I don't know what he's proposing, but it could be any of it. Okay, it's, it's not restricted. restricted. 
this license is not restricted to like a beer and wine. It's right. No, re retailers license like SDD and SDM are divided between beer and wine or beer, wine and spirits. That's not the same with class C. It's it okay. whatever you want. So you're saying that the township currently has an ordinance that for any establishment to get the class C liquor license, they have to have at least 50% selling Full food? Re, yeah, gross sales would have to be from, at least 50% of their gross sales have to be from food items. So if we have bars in the township that don't serve food at all, they're in violation of that? P potentially, I'm not sure that we do. And then really kind of the modern business climate, I, that's just not as prevalent as it, as it used to be. I, I'm not, I'm only so old, I don't know everything, yeah. but the um, it, it certainly seems like most places are have at least a, a kitchen. Yeah, I think since the smoking ban that changed. Oh, yeah. um, I have a few questions about the establishment itself, if, if that's all right to ask the owner. So I'm familiar with uh, Zapzone. I also have kids who like to go to Zapzone. So I'm familiar with the layout there. So you say this is going to be a, a full restaurant. Will it have a separate entrance to the rest of the establishment? No, it'll be actually within the establishment itself. Um, we are modifying our plans to have a patio, um, but it is uh, part of the establishment. It's not a separate business. Okay. Well, but I mean, will it have like a separate interest? So say I want to go out on a date night and I want to go to the restaurant, but I don't want to go through the arcade and, you yeah, know, all those other things. things. Design it actually. Uh, what, it's right by the main entrance. Like mm -hmm. it's just like an L restaurant when you actually... Let's say walking into uh, the Olive Garden, there is actually a, a, re a separate receptionist for the okay. restaurant uh, and the the the, okay. the the rest of the establishment. So to give you an idea of the layout, so when you first enter uh, to your left, immediately you'll have the hostess station for the restaurant and bar. Okay. Um, and to your right, you'll have uh, the the other stations uh, for the rest of the facilities. So we have also. The bowling, uh, we have bowling lanes in the facility. We have uh, glow golf, uh, which is more advanced. It's actually digital glow golf now instead of just like mm -hmm. old style cosmic. Okay. Uh, and we still have, of course, uh, the uh, grappling course as well. Uh, but we've separated the way I've designed it uh, is to actually precisely to answer your question. We wanted to keep kind of like the adults separate than the children right. so the tra uh, the bar and restaurant is right by the entrance mm -hmm. the trampoline is all the way at the end i wish uh, i had the plans on me today yeah. but it's basically a very separate uh from the bar and restaurant and then across from that you have the laser tag um and then you have the go-kart track so the restaurant is kind of like uh, in between the go-karts and right by the entrance mm -hmm. so um, and what will your policy be about open drinks in the arcade and, and the other side? Well, that's really not up to us. That's okay. up to the liquor board. They're the ones who dictate that. Now, uh, usually, in a, in a, uh, and I operate, by the way, like a bowling alleys as well and rolling drinks. So the traditional liquor license in a bowling alley is that you could have it anywhere in the right. center. Okay. Uh, the new liquor commission right now um, has restriction on where the alcohol should be in the facility. Uh, for example, Dave and Busters, they got grandfathered in. It could be anywhere. But uh, I know our facility in, um, in Ann Arbor, uh, we were limited to actually keeping it within the bar and restaurant and the party rooms. So really that's not up to us, it's up to the uh, 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 liquor commission of, okay. of how they control it so yeah and i was wondering because i was thinking about like uh spare time in lansing now they have the the bowling alley too so you're putting in bowling lanes and i know that you know the restaurant you can get drinks there and then you can take your drinks over the arcade and you know the last time i took my kids there it was kind of a problem with adults wanted to play the games and the kids wanted to and the kids were intimidated by the adults and you know and then i just hate to add liquor into that mix as well no, you, you, have a, you have a valid point by yeah. the way um from our perspective, and that's why, like I said, the way we've laid it out, like no matter what you do, mm -hmm. like for example, the bar itself, it has like a, a new wall all around it. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
So, and, and again, based on, and it's not up to me because it's already within the, uh, that's how it's regulated with the current uh, liquor mm -hmm. commissioner that it has to stay within certain perimeters. And I myself, like I said, I've been entertaining kids uh, since they became adults and now they have kids. <laughs> so uh, so I'm aware of the, of the mix of alcohol and, mm -hmm. and, and the children. And uh, it has never been tried before, creating an atmosphere for the full family where you have the adults and still have the kids. I think it's going to work well, to be honest with you. Uh, we've tried it already, that, that model in an arbor, and it worked very well. We, uh, we were able to actually attract the adults to, to the bar and restaurants. Mm -hmm. And we built it the same way where it's it looks like it's separate, even though it's the main entrance. Uh, but I don't think we need to worry about that at all. You, keep, you have to keep in mind, it's 120,000, 25,000 square foot facility. So there's like Lots huge gaps between yeah. them. Yeah. So in your Ann Arbor facility, do you find more adults without children coming to the restaurant? And uh, then... Yes, we've had actually, yeah, yeah. at first uh, we we thought that we're going to lose either or, mm -hmm. but it turned out, because that's what happens at Dave and Buster. Mm -hmm. uh, you basically get the adults and the, usually the families uh, tend to come to, to go to different places. But what we've noticed, it actually worked. Uh, we kept our uh, uh, kids uh uh, coming in and we uh, and a lot of times uh, it's becoming like kind of like a full family outing and we do have the date nights as well that comes mm -hmm. uh, and they just want to do the adult activities such as you know the axe throwing or the rage room uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the rage room which is basically if you're upset after the meeting just smack Great. the things against the box yeah. so we provide you with, with everything <laughs> or maybe only throw some axes <laughs> so okay um the last question i have um has to do with the um some some incidents in the past in the parking lot of your current facility i know that our sheriff's deputies have been called out there and there have been problems do you anticipate adding alcohol to that creating more May I talk about that for a bit? please uh, the problems, every problem that we had at that facility since it was founded was not an internal problem. Okay. It was actually an exterior problem. And um, if you, uh, uh, we get actually people from outside the facility that come in um, and, and cause this problem, whether it's in the parking lot uh, or uh, if you remember the incident, there was uh, just before the, the COVID shutdown, we had a shooting someone. Uh, I don't know how the news reported it, but uh, it was from outside. Right. Someone actually from the apartment shot at the, at the uh, window display mm -hmm. of Zabzo. So the problem had nothing to do with Zabzo itself or mm -hmm. mixing alcohol or not. To be honest with you, that's why I believe that what's happening right now may solve this problem. Because if you look at the storage building, they actually have natural walls to actually close that area. Mm -hmm. So so the guys, you're not gonna have outsiders going into that. And that's been our problem that we were getting problem from outside uh, of the facility. They were not customers, okay? Uh, and I believe Zadzo being at the mall, and I'm aware the mall does have some problems too, but it's less problem than than the Zadzo building. Okay, uh, plus the uh, you know there's uh, there's the mall security, and we're adding security now. It's big, like we're it's sad to say, but we're adding security in most of our facilities to make sure that we control outside forces. But those problems were always from outside of Zadzo, not internal. No, uh, but that's excellent to hear that you are addressing that. And plus, you will have the additional mall security and, you know, and just that that, uh, that space secure itself. So thank you very much for answering my that. questions. Um, but just one comment as far as because somebody asked a question about do we need it fast? Y yes, we do. Because uh, <laughs> just because Christmas is around the corner, like I said in my first speech, but uh, and honestly, if, if we could find a license, like if, uh, if something comes up, we're willing to pay for it. Unfortunately, there's not a single license that we've been trying for the past six months. Uh, and it does take time at the, uh, at the liquor board to approve these licenses. As, that's after the, the board, of, after you approved it, it's going to take some time. So, I mean, if we can uh, 
from what I understood that you you're having another meeting, um, I believe next next Monday. Mm -hmm. So uh, like if if that gets approved by them, that would help us tremendously. So we can actually have the application at least sent out to the liquor license. That's that's the only thing. If we can achieve that, we've done great. Yeah. I actually have a question for Peter. So if because next week is the is the last meeting in July. Okay. And then the next meeting is August. I looked it up. It's like August 7th or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, does it have to be um, published? Is it, it's just an application. So. Yeah, I wasn't expecting this would be a code amendment. We could double no, that. No, and, no and then, that's, a, that's another. Yeah, right. I don't, want, I don't want to mix them. Yeah, I was thinking this is an internal policy. You have something right. just okay. for your. So we okay. could do it next week. If, yeah, if you're comfortable with that. No, are you comfortable with that? I am comfortable with that. I, I mean, like I said, the, the information I'm going to prepare is really just uh, very simple stuff. So it's not a lot of work on, on my part. Okay. Um, and we can always tweak the language later. If the, you know, if we want to start the process with Zapstone, we could always come back and tweak it later. And if we want to talk much longer about the chapter four, we yeah. can do that another night, another right. totally different initiative. Than that. Right. Well, I, I'm i pleased that something entertainment, I think entertainment is, a, is an attractive addition to the mall. And that end, like with Barnes & Noble, which still seems to be alive and well, that to add something more to that end would be beneficial. And you're gonna have an app. So you're going in the old, old Yonkers? I'll tell you another story. I tried to buy the entire mall. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, how I wish you had. <laughs> I, I honestly did because I believe in Delta Township. And like I said, I don't just sell, I don't just don't say that. I live here, okay? My kids were raised here, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and I truly, I know everyone had given up on the mall, but I honestly believe that it still has a chance, okay? I wanted to take advantage of my attraction and buy the whole mall and start with the Zazon project and move on and build other things, okay? Uh, now, Mr. Cohen um, um, and his... Uh, I forgot the name of this company. They they own like 40 malls. Uh, and every time I speak with him, I make the joke. I say, whenever you're ready, you're like, go of it. Uh, and uh, I will buy it off of you. Because the story came about, I was actually competing with him. But again, I'm an entertainer. I don't own malls. I own my own buildings and other facilities. Uh, but we did put an offer to purchase it, and that's how we met the the owner. So when he discovered who was his competitor, he he reached out to us and he said, "Would you want to be a tenant?" I said, "No, I'm not interested in being a tenant, but would would love to buy the younger space off, off of you." And it took about a year to to get it subordinated. So we've been working on this for like over a year and a half right now. Um, so, uh, so we, go ahead. my question is with the Yonkers building, it currently has four out, well, has four, three outside openings yeah. and an opening at the mall. Correct. Are all of those going to be still no. open? The way we designed it to control trouble is you have the mall entrance and the main entrance and the other two entrances will be emergency exits only. Okay. Thank you. So, That's what right. I wanted to hear. Any other questions? Yes. No. This is for Peter. All right, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Peter, uh, yes, sir. my understanding, well, first of all, are there any numerical limitations or spacing limitations for these development licenses at all? The number would be dictated by the, the number of times that we could meet, any given business could meet the development, the application threshold. So 75K in investments in their personal business, but then also 200 in the corridor. So any increment of that. So for every $200,000 of development, every 75 at a business, we could have another license. So right now, I mean, the, the township part of it will be the easy part, the, the investment in the corridor. It's the individual businesses finding the, or them coming to us, us finding them that are willing and are making that investment and in interest in like 5,000. Yeah. Correct. Over five years. Yeah. So that isn't a real high threshold. No. Right. The project is at about uh, estimated to be eight or ten million. Understand. 
So what you're saying is, is basically there are no numerical limitations, practical limitations in Delta Township for these types of licenses. No, practically at this point, no. Now, like, over time, if development wanes on the corridor, that number could go way down. Right. We had some significant development projects that boosted us up. But yeah. That could happen again. I mean, if the Delta crossing in the next couple of years, year short, shorter, um, no, Delta crossing district, thing goes. It can be a TIF district as well. It doesn't have to be just a CIA district. Uh, it could be a TIF, uh, specifically a tax and finance authority, yeah. but the corridor is what's going to qualify us. Sure, because yeah. that's the larger area and yeah. all the way across. So my understanding is um, it could still be problematic with our Chapter 4 if we don't change this in the foreseeable near future, even for the ZAP zone, because 50% of the gross proceeds have to come from food. No. Food as opposed to alcohol. I, I'm just making it just because his business is entertainment. I'm just I'm, I'm I'm reading the language that's in here. So yeah. it's 50% of the gross proceeds have to be from food. So alcohol is very expensive. You know, I don't know what the entertainment part of that costs. So that could be problematic. So I think the board needs to take a look at that sooner rather than later is what I'm suggesting. Uh, that, that's why I brought it up. Yeah. Right. I appreciate that. So and um, concurrently, um, I think maybe the board has a similar mindset on this. I think this is a further opportunity to um, to um, in, make the corridor an attractive place for investment for any one of these categories, whether it's restaurant, entertainment, you know, or um, any other uh, qualifying right. category. You know, seeing how the threshold is relatively low, um, so. Um, but I'm just cautioning that, I, in my opinion, it looks like we need to really proceed with the Chapter 4 yeah. um, as well. Okay. But, I mean, I can see where we can go ahead and maybe approve this, but I think on the tail of that, we should be looking at changing that as well. Understood. Thank you. Question. If after we we're done with the application, it gets sent up, um, do they get, if, if they haven't sent word back saying they approved, do they give temporary um licenses and say, hey, we're going to give it to you, but we just haven't gotten yeah, there I yet. I don't I'll find out for sure. I don't think so. I think it's a MLCC is is binary. You either have it or you don't have it. You can't sell until you do. Okay. Yeah. I'll verify I'm gonna call I have to call them on something different tomorrow and I'll ask yeah. about that. Okay. Any other questions for Peter? So I think from the conversations I heard everybody's in agreement moving forward with the uh, application for Zap Zone and to uh, start looking at the review of uh, chapter four. Okay. Thank you. Great. Appreciate Thanks your time. Well. Thanks, Thanks, Peter. Good good yes. Good yeah. luck. Glad to see the investment. As we said, I think entertainment is obviously the future for the mall. So hopefully you will spur others coming in and bringing in entertainment establishments uh, to the mall to help revive that area. <laughs> that concludes our agenda. Any other items from the board? Any final public comment? Seeing that, we are adjourned.